Sheffield is where it's at today, folks. The Steel City Derby, Sheffield United against Sheffield Wednesday, live on BBC Radio Sheffield and Five Live Sports Extra. Keith Edwards and John Pearson are your two expert summarisers ahead of this one. Wednesday, unchanged. United make one change. Arturo Lupoli comes in for the suspended Darius Henderson. Your thoughts on that change, Keith Edwards? Well, I think we'll miss Henderson. He's a big target man. He does a good job for us, but maybe we have to keep the passing a little bit shorter. I think in the long run that'll do us good. The rest of the players will just be very confident after the midweek win at Southampton. John I was at the Birmingham game last week, the one-all draw that Wednesday got. I thought they played very, very well. If they play that well, they've got a real chance here, haven't they? Well, very much so, Paul. And I thought, to be honest, we played well in patches at Nottingham Forest. I was disappointed down there that not only did we not come away with at least one point, but if Franny Jeffers would have stayed on the pitch, I, I thought we would have come away with three points from that game. So, looking at it, I think we've thrown five points away in the last two games. What's going to be key to winning this derby today? I think we can go into this game full of confidence. We've got Michael Gray, we've got uh, Harry Potter, who, who's doing a great job in midfield. And if we can keep the ball and play the way that Keith wants United to play, which we have done, you know, we've kept that ball really, really well over periods in these last two games. And I, I, I think we're playing full of confidence. So if we do that and play our normal game, get Jermaine Johnson going in behind, Marcus Tudgay and Leon Clark, who I thought came in and did really well last uh, Saturday for his first game for a couple of months... You know, if everybody works and, and stays together, then there's no reason for us to have any fears in this game. Invariably, it's the first team that settles down and gets a little bit more relaxed on the ball. And as always, there's not too much from the in between the teams, but it's whoever gets them vital decisions, as we've seen at Hills, Hillsborough. They went just against us, and, and that turned the game. Unfortunately, the referee does play a huge part in, in, in these games. One or two decisions go against you. It's tough to come back from them, but I just hope for a really attractive game of football. Well, we've got a good referee, in my opinion, today. Mark Holsey will try and keep the game flowing. He'll talk to the players right throughout. Hopefully, he'll keep his cards in his pocket this time. I hope so. It's a big part of the game, and, and, and it'll make it a better game, and I'm glad you've highlighted that. Sheffield full of noise as the two teams step out onto the pitch. Sheffield United in red and white striped shirts, black shorts, black socks, led out by Nick Montgomery. Sheffield Wednesday led out by Richard Wood in blue and white striped shirts, blue shorts and white socks. Sheffield Wednesday looking to do the double over Sheffield United for the first time in 95 years. Kevin Blackwell, the Sheffield United manager, looking to taste Steel City Derby victory for the very first time. Bright sunshine, clear blue skies, great atmosphere. Let's get another thought from John Pearson and Keith Edwards, then Seth Bennett will get us started. Keith? Well, to be fair, to, it looks the ground looks fantastic normally, but when it's full, John, you, you know, it's a great atmosphere. This is one da- time where we, we do agree on something. We don't have misplay when, it, when you see this kind of game coming forward. Well, these are the games that you want to be involved in, and I'm sure that those supporters behind the, uh, the, the, the stand to our left, the Wednesday supporters, are going to be in fine voice this afternoon, absolutely bringing the house down. Not only those 3,000, but the 9,000 back at Hillsborough, who I'm sure we can hear if we just listen a little bit. Uh, there he go. He's kicking off at Hillsborough as well. 19, Michael Gray. 21, Lewis Buxton. 23, Jermaine Johnson. So, four visitors this afternoon. 25, Richard Lane. 6, Steve Watson. Exciting times at Bramall Lane then. Away to our left on the Bramall Lane end, the Owls fans are bouncing in sections. The Blades fans are a sea of red and white around pretty much four sides of this stadium. Great atmosphere, buzzing down at pitch side. Almost there, the man in the middle, Mark Halsey, is going to be a key to this. Are you happy with that man? Yes, we've, we've just touched on that. He, he plays a big part in this game today. I'm, I'm glad the Football League have seen sense to give us a top-class referee. Always a difficult game to, to referee because it's invariably 100 miles an hour. I'm glad the, uh, the toss has been one we kick our usual way and go towards the cup in the second half. It makes for a great game. Good luck to both teams. Hopefully the best team will win and come out on tops. John Pearson. Well, that's very kind of you, Keith. That is sporting. Something I wasn't expecting, but... <laughs> I was just trying to throw you, John. <laughs> you have done. But, just said uh, I'd like to throw you off his gantry on occasions. <laughs> well... A lovely welcome, wasn't it? That little uh, letter that was left for me. I, I can't tell you what it said. 
Yeah, just a bit of fun, wasn't it? BBC Radio Sheffield, five live sports extra. This is the Steel City Derby. And we're about to get underway. The Blades defend the cop in this first 45 minutes. They will go from right to left in those red and white striped shirts. Black shorts, black socks. It's blue and white striped shirts, blue shorts and white socks for the visitors from S6. We're underway as Leon Clark taps the ball back towards Potter and he spreads it wide left into the sunshine where the first challenge comes in and it's a, a quick one from Kyle Norton, a naughty one as well. And that will be a first, as well. first free kick of yeah. the game. I think he got a kick in the head as he went in a bit low on Marcus Tudgate. And Wednesday can float the ball into the box from that left-hand side. It's ten yards over halfway and probably seven or eight yards in from that Wednesday left-hand touchline. The Owls will take it right-footed and it goes in towards the edge of the box and Tudgate who gets up but beaten in the air by Kilgallen. Sent back out to the right and Michael Gray, the 34-year-old, drags it back with the right boot, comes come to Tommy Spar! Oh! A first-minute goal for Tommy Spar and Sheffield Wednesday! The Owls Academy product drives it home and the Blades are stunned and Tommy Spurs loving it! Sheffield Wednesday have the lead at Bramall Lane. A minute in, Tommy Spurs scores. Blades nil, Wednesday won. Un uh, what can I say, Seth? Uh, what a score. I don't think United have, have kicked the ball. Full credit to Michael Gray. He's been composed on the ball. He's just fired a low cross in. Tommy Spur completely unmarked. You know, that's the sort of shot, the sort of effort that could have gone high into the stand, kept his calm and drilled it past and left Paddy Kelly no chance. What a start. Well, it's not that, yep. No complaints, to be fair. We, we were second to the ball. We didn't clear our lines well. It was a good ball in from Gray. No complaints whatsoever. The lads buried it well. But all in all, you've, you start these games, it's the worst possible start. You've got to be first to the ball. You've got to be up for it. It might just be one of them days where there's plenty of goals. Let's hope so, and it's an attacking game. But we've got to, we've got to look to a lot better standards than that. It's got to be wide open from here for a Sheffield United perspective. One down in the early stages, and Brian Laws is in dreamland right now. Here's Stephen Quinn volleying forward from halfway. It's rejected by Wednesday, and it's back with Matt Kilgallen, who raises one over halfway. Now headed by Gray, O'Connor is in with a challenge, but the Blades get it forward cut out by Buxton and now O'Connor with the flick header there's a foul given by the referee Mark Halsey on Brian Howard and it all came Keith from that free kick Was were they a few early nerves from no to be fair I, I watched that uh, particular incident Carl Norton is, is a great prospect great player but to be fair to him he's just slipped and he's just slid into the play it looked worse but it was only based on the fact that the, uh, he slipped and, and the referee handled that very well but no uh, no complaints you put a ball into the box just a hopeful ball you don't clear your lines on, a, on occasions you get punished it's the Sheffield Derby on BBC Radio Sheffield and five live sports extra as Quinn volleys on, headed away by Richard Wood, the Wednesday captain. Sheffield United nil, Sheffield Wednesday won the scoreline. Naismith with a throw midway inside the Wednesday half. Quinn with a bit of movement, but it really has taken the wind out of the blade sails and they've all run away from the throw and... Naismith can't get the ball back in play eventually he tosses it to the byline driven in by Quinn to the front post it's cleared away by Wednesday and Leon Clark can get there first now Johnson flicks a header out towards Tommy Spur where Greg Halford intercepts for the Blades and he picks it up on halfway here's Lee Bromby midway inside his own half and now he finds Paddy Kenny who had absolutely no chance on the goal it's pumped high and it's pumped long and Wednesday will win that battle if it continues but Montgomery heads the ball forward Spur turns it out and the Blades get a throw down the right hand side, John Pearson well we've just got to get the ball down now and just get composed and get our uh, breath back and just slow the game down a little bit you know we've not really got the ball down yet since we've scored and you know got a few passes going here's a long throw from Halford, speared in deep and there's Lee Grant, he's let it go, he's gone in is it? Key United to turn it home, they can't the goal's been given and the Blades have equalised I think it's going to be the new man Arturo Lupoli who gets his name on the score sheet it was a scrappy one but the long throw works wonders and after four minutes in the Steel City derby it's been electric stuff Wednesday open their account
out and then Arturo Lupoli for the blaze Sheffield United won Sheffield Wednesday won well called Sheffield it wasn't that easy to see it was a crowd of players in there finally we get something from one of them throws and you know it was speeding it was absolutely perfect throw we've got there first of the ball it makes for a great derby I'm glad we've bounced straight back shows the character in the side and the fans are right behind him what a start to a local derby John Pearson well I've just a little bit as I've mentioned before we've not got the ball down I, th- I thought we'd just uh, just lost it a little bit this, this is better get cut out by Kyle Norton though and now it's back with Paddy Kenny who takes a touch and now right footed will clear away headed away and now Norton can flick it towards the right hand side for the blades he's running out of space and in the end just took it into touch on the far side dreadful goal to concede though from that long throw I'm sure that uh, Lee Grant's not going to be happy here's a throw down the line it's with Marcus Tudgay and he flicks on Bromby's there composed header all the way back towards Paddy Kenny two goals in the first four minutes of a game you can't ask for any more than that it's a great start we got the worst possible start but credit to Wednesday for, for capitalising on it but we want a great response it's a, it's a good game I think looking at our back four a little bit shaky to start with to concede a goal but they look a lot more composed now the likes of Norton and Bromby look a little bit happier on the ball and just a little bit more relaxed the one thing I am concerned about is midfield players have just helped the ball on get it down and play that's your responsibility we can't just knock it on we've got to give Weber, who's playing in the centre better service than we, than we have been doing here's Quinn finds Weber. Weber, good control on the edge of the box but nicked off him and Gray turns it back towards Grant who swings the right leg through it it's high arcing into the blades half headed away by Kilgallen only as far as Potter miscontrolled Weber can chest down blades in possession Weber stopped and now here's Nick Montgomery He's not got many options here, Montgomery, so eventually he has to go all the way back towards Paddy Kenny. Good closing down, John Pearson. Yeah, they're working hard in midfield, but then when that ball comes forward from Lee Grant, the two strikers were isolated. We didn't see them as though them, any of the midfield four were anywhere near them, and they didn't compete and win that header, and this is the first time J- the Jermaine Johnson's had the chance to run his fullback. Johnson against Norton. Norton, this time he's victorious. I think he's got clobbered in the back of the head again as he went sliding in to put the ball out of play. Well, he's in the wars, but he's still doing a grand job. I just hope he recovers from this. John Pearson, not seen that many times this year, have we? <laughs> Jermaine Johnson knocks the ball to go past his player, and all of a sudden he realises, hang on a second, we've got a race here. Well, exactly. He's got a tough test this afternoon, but uh, Norton will be the first fullback that's contained him if he, if he manages to do that. But uh, keep giving that Jermaine Johnson the ball. He's a threat. Nice that's- to see the, uh, the Wednesday player shake. Norton's hand as well it was a, a bit of an accident he's just caught him late I like to see that good play here's Clark finds Tudgate oh. cut out by Naismith his clearance is deflected Johnson chest down on the left hand side faced up by Kyle Norton near the byline now can he deliver this one in good play by Johnson into the front post cleared away by the blades and now Halford will send it out towards Lupoli on this left hand side he chests down himself the debutant for the blades oh. now Stephen Quint oh dear me <laughs> sent it down the line and he took that one right between the legs Arturo take literally. the responsibility of having second t- uh, two touches can't as a professional footballer you can't just help the ball on every time here's Quinn again goes round the challenge of O'Connor now feeds it in towards Howard Howard takes a touch Potter's there good challenge great from second. the Wednesday midfielder that was a great last move from us Seth though uh, great play between Clark and Tudgay and unfortunately the, the hard work had been done and all, all that didn't look out to me but uh, Leon Clark's layoff to Marcus Tudgay was just slightly too much otherwise he would have had a, a free chance at goal Paddy Kenny just uh, hits the linesman with the ball sent back towards Gary Nace I think it was all unintentional throw to the blades it's one apiece on 5 Live Sports Extra and BBC Radio Sheffield's football heaven it's the Steel City derby as it's speared down the line from Naismith but zips off this surface and away it goes nine minutes gone one apiece who's edging it Keith? well it's it's difficult to call at this moment in time I, I, you would I'm sure John will agree with me teams need to settle down I got a little bit crossed with Stephen Quinn earlier on for just helping the ball on bring it down and pass the ball in difficult times like this that's what's expected of you and you have to take that responsibility we need to keep better possession we need to give the strikers better service we can't we're we're in a habit of just helping the ball on for Henderson he's not there today play to player's strengths 
Here's Michael Gray bringing the ball down. It's now on this right-hand side. Gray tries to go past Lupoli on the outside. Now Gray will turn onto his favoured left foot. Well charged down by the Italian, though. And now Stephen Quinn goes sideways towards Norton. Norton helps it down the line a little further. Cut out by Spur. And now Johnson. Can he get past Norton? Sliding challenge. Interesting. As is a... Obviously contact made with Johnson, he holds that right ankle. And Wednesday gets a throw, and Tommy Spur will send this in from the left-hand side. In bright sunshine in South Yorkshire, and he'll deliver this one deep towards the penalty spot. Headed away by Kilgallen. James O'Connor's there, and then Nick Montgomery can head it. Who's going to win this ball and get it down? Kilgallen with a header. It's head tennis, and then Kung Fu kick from... Montgomery will get it out of play and you just sense John Pearson it's very frenetic right now well that's out what we expected in this opening 20 minutes we thought if we could silence the crowd that we would uh, you know get on top but we did silence them but we couldn't keep it going superb skill from Gray there down in front of us Naismith with a challenge and the throw's taken quickly by Wednesday it breaks towards O'Connor now Clark good touch to roll Montgomery and now feeds it out towards Buxton, who drives on in, hits Montgomery in the back. Corner. That will be a corner kick for Wednesday. One Wednesday one just the settling line. down a little bit. Keith's on about teams settling down, and we've just settled down now in this last few minutes. Michael Gray's uh, delivery from set pieces has been superb so far since he's joined us. Great fluorescent green boots. Great delivery as well from set pieces for the Sheffield Wednesday signing. Raises his right arm and now delivers in towards Paddy Kenny. Just about fists it away and now Quinn completes up towards Lupoli. Beaten in the air by Spur. Beavers helps it back into the box. Woods there. Men over here. Chance on a volley. It's cleared away eventually by Montgomery. Could have fallen anywhere that. There was several Wednesday players still there. I think Leon Clark was one. Woody was another just going up for that header. Here's Tugay again. Edge of the box. United can muscle him out. And Paddy Kenny can take a touch. And Keith, it seems to me Wednesday are now settling better. Well, at the first of the ball, we've we've uh, lost out on one or two headers, and that concerns me a little bit. We need to be first of the ball. We need to react, and you know, but okay, it's early doors yet, so yeah, they may edge it slightly uh, in in that department, but we need to settle a little bit, get first of the ball. Johnson against Norton again on that far side. Norton again with the challenge. What a oh. great... <laughs> Good contest, that today, Great battle, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? You could just yeah. watch that all day long. Yeah. Well, as, as we were saying, settling down with that superb play again. Good one-two with Tudgay and Jermaine Johnson using his pace, but credit to the full-back, he did enough, got back, got his tackling. Here is Halford raising one down the line. He squirts it out of play, though. John Street side of Bramall Lane. It's one apiece on BBC Radio Sheffield and five live sports extra. I think both sides reacted poorly to scoring. Wednesday sort of went back into the shell and, and weren't really sure what, what to do next, whether to carry on or sit back. And United responded well after Wednesday scored. And Wednesday have done the same, responded really well since uh, it's come back to one all. Here's Halford trying to thread a ball down the right-hand channel for Danny Webber. Cleared away by Beavers, who was alive to the danger. Not a bad ball, that, from Howard. That's the type of service Webber will want. At worst, he'll turn the Wednesday defence. Halford to toss the ball back into play. It's similar position to where the Blades goal came from it's level just about with the edge of the box and there are plenty forward ball going to be delivered in from the sunshine it's high, it's arcing, it's looping towards Lupoli now here's Montgomery just wide that would have been some goal on the volley from the edge of the D I'd have, I'd have never have given him any criticism ever again if that had gone in <laughs> well done Nick for ticking up a great position first to the ball, that's what it's all about in local derby, he's been first to that ball are you concerned about the way Wednesday are defending from these set pieces I think that as we've seen in the premiership with Stoke that that long throw is, is even more dangerous than a corner because you can be a lot more accurate so it is a danger but we've done well there I think I'm not sure if it was uh, Woody that got to the header and got it away but obviously you've got somebody picking up that ball on the edge of the box Danny Weber dangles a foot and it breaks down the left-hand side. Lupoli, tons of space and pace, but then well-muscled off by Lewis Buxton. He looks quick, though, Lupoli. Yeah, I was just going to come on to that, uh, Seth. He knows now he's got the beating of him. Now recognise that strength and push the balls in between the centre-half and the full-back. And uh, our new signing, Lupoli, will, will possibly do him for speed. Full-back now will be a little bit concerned with that, but play to his strengths. Goal kick for Wednesday, taken by Lee Grant. A high one over halfway, it's Lee Bromby who heads away. 120 appearances for Sheffield Wednesday, Lee Bromby. Came through the academy there as Lupoli takes possession for the Blades, finds Quinn out towards 
this left-hand side and Gary Naismith midway inside his own half and he angles one over the head of Danny Webber but Halford could be in at the back here cleared away by Tommy Spur and Tommy Spur gives the absolute business to Mark Beavers well Mark Beavers can't afford to let that ball go there in that situation he didn't know what was behind him else he wouldn't have let it go you know and so why he's let that ball go God only knows Blades corner left-hand side Stephen Quinn to take Bramall Lane end of the ground 1-1 and Quinn pauses now left footed he'll float this one towards the back post it's easy for Lee Grant really poor delivery and Grant can volley away and he's got the figure of Jermaine Johnson who takes possession but then Nick Montgomery with a, a pass back from midway inside his own half he finds Paddy yeah, Kenny you know he has his critics and every now and then I have a little bit of a chip at him but get up and down that field help the defence support the, the, the midfield support the strikers that's what he does just you know, like a lot of people just need to compose yourself and this is the game to do it in Stephen Quinn tries to get a foot in but one back by Wednesday and now his Potter not seen much of the ball to gate. oh that's delicious down the left hand side he's picked out Johnson who's got goal side of Norton can he go past him though tries to shimmy into the box Norton gets a foot in then he'll just keep possession finds Paddy Kenny and now the Blades keeper will clear away and he does up towards halfway where Beavers heads back with interest Blaze can take it down with Kilgallen, who first time puts it up in the air. O'Connor beats Montgomery in the air, and the Blades will win a throw on that right-hand side. And, John, you feel that Wednesday need to really try and get their midfield two, the central two, into this game? Yes, uh, and then uh, Potter's picked that great ball up, found Tudgay, and then we've, we've got Jermaine Johnson down there. But what they've got to do is, is what Keith's saying, that Nick Montgomery does well, and they've got to be box-to-box -box and get that support. When Johnson gets that ball on the left hand side there he wants to cross it he wants somebody in the middle here's Danny Webber down the right for the blaze oh, poor touch from him he dribbles it straight into touch under no real pressure and that's a throw for Sheffield Wednesday 16 minutes on the clock at Bramall Lane in the Steel City derby and it was fast it was frenetic first four minutes two goals first of all Tommy Spur after really good play from Michael Gray to pick him out on the edge of the box he thundered one home and then Arturo Lupoli getting on the end of a long throw Somehow it hit the bar, it was a bit of a Jeff Hurst moment and it was given by the referee and the linesman between them as the Blades concede a free kick on the far side and the atmosphere just died down a little bit after that fast and frenetic start. Well, that's because Wednesday are a little slightly in the ascendancy. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, it's a good game. You know, players are putting everything into it, as you would expect. I think we're losing an aerial battle in midfield and that concerns me. They've been first to the ball there, but you know, it, it takes a while to settle down in these games. But yeah, as a professional footballer, you've got to play to people's strengths and, and, and you have to relax on that ball. Like now we're playing head tennis and we just want to clear our lines. Be confident enough to bring the ball down. You know you can do it, you would do it in any other game. You've got to have self-belief to do it in this game. Those are your expert summarizers former blade striker Keith Edwards and the former Wednesday frontman John Pearson it's BBC Radio Sheffield and it's five live sports extra as Richard Wood nods the ball back to his goalkeeper Lee Grant and this really could be the battle of two of the best goalkeepers in this division for me I think Lee Grant is superb just won the player of the month in the championship as it's chested down and Bromby left footed will hack one away towards this uh, left-hand touchline goes out of play despite the chase of Lupoli and Wednesday can get the ball back in with Lewis Buxton a throw midway inside the blades half he's creeping forward Lewis Buxton now here's Leon Clark Buxton cleared away by Lupoli and only as far as O'Connor he helps it back down the left-hand side and Kilgallen will send it away first time then good stretch Lupoli but he's probably going to struggle to keep this in and Naismith heads down the line and this time he does head out of play just right in front of Kevin Blackwell who gives the linesman a bit of a volley of abuse uh, but I think that probably was just about out of play as Lewis Buxton throws one in it looks suspiciously like a foul throw to me that as Danny Webber tries to roll Beavers midway inside the Wednesday half he gives it away to Stephen Quinn first time ball to the right now Greg Halford Halford's got options ahead of him and in the end he can't use any of them because Tommy Spur is in smartly but the Blades get another throw on that right hand side Keith well, Edwards you mentioned options we left Weber and, and Lupoli in the box and we had nobody there coming to support him and we just you know we need to be quickness of thought needs to be a little bit sharper and he needs support on that occasion 
Here's the long throw from Halford. It's speared into that box. It breaks. Is there a man pulled down in the box? Falls back. Shot comes off the post from Bromby. Nearly found the top corner. Well, the Blades had, first of all, a shout for a penalty. And second of all, they've hit the woodwork here. Keith Edwards. Yeah, just uh, so close. It would have been great for Bromby, wouldn't it? But, you know, we look to have a little bit of an edge when that ball goes into the box. Wednesday will be disappointed that they haven't cleared the lines. But, thankfully, we've been first to the ball. Steve Watson is doing some stretches in the Wednesday technical area. Here's Stephen Quinn with another left-wing corner. It's driven to the back post. It's back there with Halford. He couldn't aim that header at goal. He got free, but just couldn't find the power or direction. Well, I just thought he'd give uh, Mark Beavers a little push in the back, and I'm not sure whether the referee saw it or not. He's pointing to that area, but that's where he would have pointed for the goal kick anyway. Uh, Carry on, John, sorry. I'm just wondering now uh, if Steve Watson's going to come on at... Whereabouts he's going to come? I'm just looking to see if I can see any injuries or not. I can't spot anything yet. Maybe he was just having a warm, getting those ageing muscles flexed. As here's Leon Clark bringing the ball down and tries to find Tudgay. Tudgay pokes it out to Gray. Wednesday on the attack. In front of the cop at Bramwell Lane. Curled in back post. Here's Leon Clark. Oh! Great chance. He got around the back of Norton. He poked it into the fans behind the Wednesday uh, behind Paddy Kenny, should I say, in that United goal. Superb cross from Michael Gray. Done everything right. Stood it up at the far post. Leon Clark was being held by the United defender that managed to get around him. And his outstretched foot. Just not enough contact to put that on target. Did really well. Worked hard for the chance. But just couldn't get enough connection on the ball. Still one apiece at Bramall Lane in the Steel City derby. You're live on BBC Radio Sheffield and Five Live Sports Extra. Later on BBC Radio Sheffield, the whole of Blackpool against Doncaster Rovers later on Sports Extra from 2.30 we're going to be in Jamaica for day three of that first test match between England and the West Indies and the West Indies in a fairly commanding position at the moment that's what's to come but I've got to say I'm enjoying this 21 minutes gone 1-1 here how are you feeling Keith? it's a good game I mean it's a, it's an it's settled down a little bit. I can see Wednesday's strengths. I think uh, Gray is, is, is providing one or two problems for us on this left-hand side, but we have to be aware of that. Free kick floated in by Gray, and it's Kilgallen who gets up first. Flicked away only as far as O'Connor. Quinn can win it back. Now the play is well spread. It's up towards Danny Webber down the left channel. It's too heavy from Stephen Quinn. It's an easy one for Lee Grant to get hold of, and he'll bowl it immediately to his left, and Gray who takes off over halfway. Great engine, Michael Gray moves past one, he's still on that far left-hand side, right on the touchline, now he'll work a ball inside, it's cut out by Lupulik and now Naismith left-footed will clear towards Danny Weber, cut out by Richard Wood, flicked inside by Jermaine Johnson, the Wednesday wingers have switched and O'Connor will work it to the right-hand side in Jermaine Johnson who may get more luck against Gary Naismith the Blades win a throw, we get a thought first from Keith Edwards, then John Pearson and Paul Walker will get you towards half-time Well that's better from Naismith, he was, uh, he was aware of the challenges coming in and he's timed that to perfection, he's got a good challenge in, he's had a busy, uh, busy start to the day but he's now coping with it well, I'm happy with how we've settled down, especially after the United equaliser. I think we've been the team that's uh, been more likely to score. United have had that one uh, shot that's hit, hit the post, but apart from that, I think we've mostly controlled it. I just want to see us get the ball out to uh, Gray and Johnson even more and get those two players playing, because I, I think they could be key to our success. 1-1 one, one then at Bramall Lane as Tudgay heads on looking for Clark. Headed away by the former Wednesday player, now a blade, Bromby. But Wednesday will nick it back in midfield and Potter strides forward. Angles the ball out to Gray on the left-hand side. Norton goes across to close him down. Spurs gone forward in support. It's just outside the Sheffield United penalty area. Crossed in towards Clark, cleared by Montgomery. And Holford will shift the ball up to halfway for Danny Webber. He's got Beavers for company. And it goes off Beavers last and out of play for a Sheffield United throw right on halfway. Keith Edwards. Yeah, we get uh, the, the right kind of service to Danny Webber, and it has to be. We can't knock the ball high today. We've got to push it into areas that will try and turn the Wednesday defenders. But on that occasion, we've knocked it into his feet. He's just miscontrolled it, but he's still kept possession, and we've got to throw in. So that, that, that's the important factor from United's point of view. Norton th throw down the right, cleared away, only as far as Montgomery on the edge of the box, and then Quinn sends a high ball out to the right. And that's controlled neatly by Michael Gray, who's pushed back to the byline by Holford. Gray turns, and I think he ran that ball out, Michael Gray. The linesman says so. 
and that'll be a Sheffield United corner. Good closing down from uh, from Halford. He's worked hard there, pushed Gray into into a spot and and didn't challenge, didn't give a free kick away. Just allowed the Wednesday player to run it out. It's one all in the Sheffield derby on BBC Radio Sheffield and Five Live Sports Extra. Two goals in the first five minutes. Wednesday ahead after 55 seconds. The Blades equalising on four minutes. And Stephen Quinn will take this right wing corner for Sheffield United. Left footed it goes too flat to the near post. And it's dealt with by the Wednesday captain. And it's cleared away by Richard Wood. I think these are even more dangerous than the corners though, these throw-ins. Dis- well, disappointed with that corner. We, we've had four corners, he's wasted two and, and, and the other two have been fair corners, but you've got to have a better average than that. Holford with a throw next to the corner flag. He's caused problems from these situations. Thrown into the box. It's a diving header out by O'Connor. Only as far as Montgomery. Back out to Holford. One touch to control. Then he swings the cross in. It's a bouncer. It's awkward. Tugay lashed at it. Cleared out to Quinn on the edge of the D. And then Wednesday emerged with Potter. But Montgomery nicks it back. And Webb is in behind the Wednesday defence. Tries the shot. First one is blocked. He might get a second bite at it. Drops on the edge of the area. And Tommy Spur clears Wednesday's lines up to halfway. Well, that was superb defending. I think it was Mark Beavers, the outstretched leg, who just dived. Blocked the shot. But what a, what a last guy. Tackle or block that was from Mark Beavers. Absolutely fantastic defending. I needed Weber to react quicker. He's got half a chance just to create into the box and, and get his shot on goal. Unfortunately, the, the Wednesday defenders closed him down, but I, I thought Danny Weber was a little bit slow to react to a, a good chance. The two sides in contrasting form. One defeat in 12 in all competitions for Sheffield United. That was the defeat to Doncaster Rovers in their last home game. Wednesday with just one win in nine. That was a 4-1 win against Charlton. And not long before the Wednesday chairman has to make a mad dash across to Hillsborough at half-time. He's watching the first half here and then going back to Hillsborough and sitting with the 9,000 Wednesday fans who are watching and listening on the big screen. Hello to you over there if you're watching on that giant screen this afternoon. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. And Sheffield United here have a throw in their half next to the corner flag just in front of the cop and Greg Holford should be able to throw this ball pretty much up to the halfway line it's not far short of it as he throws long down the right Spur wins it in the air Bromby clears away breaks on halfway Beaver sticks a right foot through the ball it's a high hanging one towards Tudgay who leapt with Kilgallen got his head to the ball but couldn't find a blue and white shirt and then Holford's clearance is closed down by Michael Gray and that will be another Sheffield United throw which the ex-Wednesday man Lee Bromby will take one all, John Pearson. Yeah, I'm just looking at Michael Gray now. I think he's been the outstanding player on the pitch so far. He's, he's crossing, he's rarely given the ball away, and then he's just showing that other side he's got determination uh, to close that ball down through his body at the uh, at the ball and force the, the throw in deep in United's half. Headed away by Richard Wood. Montgomery does likewise for United. Here's the Blades goal scorer who brought them level, Lupoli, who's robbed a bit by. Jermaine Johnson, and then a crowd of bodies go in. It gets a little bit nasty, but Mark Halsey right on top of it to break things up before it can get out of hand. James O'Connor and Stephen Quinn squaring up to each other. The referee right in the middle of it and sorting it out and calming them down. Well, you touched on the uh, on the referee at the beginning of the show and, and, and rightly pointed out that he's a top-class referee. He was there to sort it out. It was, a, it was a tad awkward, but I think in the end, people were rushing a little bit out of control. Well, the referee will get us restarted with a drop ball situation just inside the Wednesday half to the left of the centre circle. And it's won by Potter. The ball runs loose, it's collected by Gary Naismith who's played in one or two derbies in his time, the Merseyside derby, Hearts against Hibs as well, plenty of experience there. Here's Howard, ten yards outside the Wednesday penalty area, surrounded by blue and white, tackled by Gray, and Wednesday clear over halfway. Kilgallen wins it, but gives it straight to Tubgay, who now motors forward. Clark trying to get in position for him, and Tubgay oh! What a goal! It's absolutely world-class from Marcus Tubgay on the right boot, in the top corner. Paddy Kelly, absolutely no chance. It's an absolute screamer. And Marcus Tudgay goes and celebrates with the Wednesday fans behind the goal down the other end of the field. But it's Marcus Tudgay's 10th goal of the season and possibly best goal of the season. Blades 1, Wednesday 2. Absolutely speechless. That goal has spoke for itself, Paul. You can't describe it. There aren't the words to describe that goal. That is absolutely unbelievable. What a strike in such a game like this. 
But I think if you can Fantastic. Rifle, rifle it in the top corner from there, I've certainly got no complaints. It was a perfect strike, wasn't it? United have to respond again. We're missing out in midfield. We give the ball away. We've created our own problem. The game is just passing Howard by. We need people like that in, in back in the game. What a hit from Marcus Tudgate, who for me is having one hell of a season. He's got a habit in scoring in these kind of matches as well. I remember he scored at Hillsborough last season in Wednesday's 2-0 win when he scored in front of the cup. That wasn't a bad finish either. But it I'd... won't better the one he's just scored. I just hope we're responding in the right manner now, uh, Paul. You know, we don't sit back, we keep going, we've been the better side, we've, been, we've got to believe in ourselves. Here is Stephen Quinn on the Sheffield United right of the Blades, look for a quick response, gets it back from Holford, at the bar line, Quinn's cross is right-footed and deep and it swirls over the crossbar and behind for a Sheffield Wednesday goal kick of... United got it in their locker key to find a quick reply. At this moment in time, I'm awfully disappointed with with, with the midfield. The, they've given the ball away, the, the second to the ball, and we're missing out. That's the engine room of any team. And, and unfortunately, we're just rushing our pass, and I've said that for the last few weeks. And You have to be composed on, on, on these occasions, and you have to make sure, get that ball at least into an area where you can attack. And, and unfortunately, uh, the likes of Quinn, Montgomery and Howard are not doing that. Half an hour gone in the Sheffield derby. It's Wednesday who lead it by two goals to one here on BBC Radio Sheffield and five live sports extra. Here is Montgomery in the centre circle. Ball won't drop though. It will now with Stephen Quinn who chips one long down the left and Danny Webber gives chase but Richard Wood strides across and the Wednesday skipper steers the ball into touch for a blade throw in. And this will be 15 yards in from the corner flag. A lightning start to this game when Tommy Spur fired Wednesday ahead on 55 seconds. Cancelled out on four minutes by the debutant Aturo Lupoli, but Marcus Tudgay's strike on 29 minutes has the Wednesday fans bouncing behind the goal away to the left as Holford now spears the throw into the six-yard box. Grant comes and takes it. Great Under catch. pressure, did very well. That's a superb catch. He's got his confidence. I thought he came for the first one when United equalised and didn't quite get to it, but... Since then, he's recovered. He's come out and taken some great catches. To be fair, I, yeah, credit to the keeper, but I have to say it's a, it's a poor corner kick again. Keeper shouldn't be able to allow to do that. If you get the service right, you'll cause them all kinds of problems, and you either knock it onto the near post or you go towards the penalty spot to make your team favourites to get a good challenge in. And unfortunately, three corners out of five, we haven't done that. That was a throw-in, by the way. Well, whatever, same thing. Hey, calm it goes, down, into, the, calm it goes down. into the box. You've got to do it with uh, either near post or far post. I couldn't see for you standing in my way. <laughs> Come on, you behave yourself so far. Let's get Don't spoil it. No, no, I've got no complaints. I see the game a lot better than John. He's just, <laughs> just a big daft fan at times. But credit to him. No, it was a great goal. But and, and Wednesday are winning that midfield, and that's the difference between them. Keith Edwards and John Pearson, you two expert summarisers today. Here is Holford on the Sheffield United right, deep in his own half. He's tackled. Now Norton looks to skip away from the challenge and the attentions of Tudgate. Free kick taken quickly by United as Tudgate just clipped the heels of Norton. Now Montgomery smashes long down the right. Beavers gobbles it up and heads away. Now Potter, sloppy from him, given away to Danny Webber, level with the penalty area. He spins in from the right-hand side and finds the Blades captain, Nick Montgomery. Montgomery just outside the box, well tackled by Tudgay. Now Johnson nips in, he's in a left-back position. Oh. And it eventually breaks off Jermaine Johnson for a blade throw. And this is level with the box. And this is one of a series of throws that Greg Holford's had from the right. And Bromby and Kilgallen, the two centre-backs, have gone forward for it. In goes the throw over the six-yard box, bounces towards Stephen Quinn on the volley, deflects away for a corner kick. I think that was Tudgay, got his head to it. It's a good strike, actually, from Stephen Quinn. Tudgay's the man of the moment. Yep, well, it's a good throw, isn't it? It's causing a lot of problems and we're getting efforts on goal, so persevere with it. That seems to be a lot better than the corner kicks. United won Wednesday 2 in the Steel City derby. Stephen Quinn's corner from the left. Lifted in far post, and again, it's a comfortable catch for Lee Grant. Disappointing from a Blades perspective, but Wednesday will take that all day long. Really comfortable for the Wednesday well, keeper. He's coming and getting everything now. Looks really comfortable. He's a superb goalkeeper. Grant clears. Norton looks to control at the back and sends a high spinning ball into Wednesday territory. 
But I've got to say, Wednesday for me have been the better side so far in this match. Yeah, without a doubt, Paul. And you know now, if we believe in ourselves and we get the ball out to Johnson and we get the ball out to Gray. As Holford looks to pick up a loose ball inside the penalty area, turning front post, Webber's there, Howard's inside the box, eight yards out, Montgomery! Oh, wide! Well, good position from Nick once again. And he's got in there, hit the target and that scores, but, you know, he's a bit unfortunate. Howard needs to be brighter. He's not reacting to the ball coming to him. Well, I'm just looking at Jermaine Johnson and uh, I'm losing it. So Connor, he's going to cross to have a word with him. He's not happy. He's a threat, but he's got to get his mind right. It doesn't look as though his mind's right at the moment. Ten minutes to go to the break. United won Wednesday to the score on BBC Radio Sheffield. Also on five live sports section. We've got the cricket for you later on. Here is Potter. Out to the left and Tommy Spur who opened the scoring in this game. Good passage of play from Wednesday. Steered out to Jermaine Johnson. Spur continued the run. Johnson skips on the inside of Bromby and still manages to keep it. To the edge of the box and Marcus Tudgay. Chance to shoot maybe. Pass sideways now for Leon Clark who tried to give it back to Tudgay. And it deflects up in the air and it's caught by Paddy Kenny. Michael Gray's the ball. He's wide open on this right hand side. He's screaming for it. He's got acres of space. Header on by Holford down the other end. Now Danny Webber tries to get goal side of Beavers, who's defended very, very well in this first half. Webber's had nothing, nothing out of Beavers so far. As Bromby sends a high, looping ball up to halfway. Both Quinn and O'Connor missed it. Quinn was nudged, and that will be a free kick to Sheffield United. Keith Edwards. I'd like to disagree with you, Paul, about the Webber situation, but to credit to him, it was a good first touch. He's tried to turn him in the box. He's done everything right. He's just not quite sharp enough, but I think it was good defending from the, from the Wednesday lad. I think, though, United have been guilty of, of going long and high in the air, and Beavers actually will win that battle. He's, he's got the height advantage over Webber. Well, yes, and uh, we, we've got to learn from that and react quickly. Kenny's free kick into the box, drops on the edge of the penalty area. And Wednesday clear onto halfway. Here's Leon Clark tangling with Kilgallant. Clark pushes it back to James O'Connor, who chips one out to the right, and the fluorescent booted Michael Gray. Leisman flagging furiously as Naismith challenged, and Gray has gone down injured. That's going to be a booking. He's got to get. He's got to start getting. Uh, sort that out, Michael Gray. As I said, well, it's not a good sight, is it, to see Michael Gray hobbling? No, we don't need that. We need Michael Gray on the pitch. It was a late challenge. I've got no concern with that. I, I think that tells its own story. That he's had one or two problems with him. Well, he's not booked. Nate no. Smith he wants to keep it clean. It wasn't a bad challenge. I think the lad, to be fair to me, he's. he's He's fallen more awkwardly than anything else. Potter with a You've free kick for Wednesday. <laughs> you ain't got nothing to say. You made that bit up, didn't you? <laughs> I haven't. Why should I make that bit up? I just seen, talked about what I've just seen. The lad's up, isn't he? Potter free kick, wide on the right, midway through Sheffield United territory. Potter will bend one in right footed over the penalty spot, glanced away by the head of Holford. And it will run away now for a Wednesday throw over on the far touchline, just in from the corner flag. Wednesday 2-1 up at United. Spurs going to take this throw. Tudgay, Clark, Wood all waiting in the penalty area. Michael Gray perched on the edge of the box as Tommy Spur winds up this throw from the Wednesday left-hand side. Thrown in towards the near post, Wood tries to leave Ron. Headed away by Bromby, straight back to the throw-in taker, Spur. Quinn goes over to challenge. Spur tries to get on the outside. But it will be another throw as Quinn makes the challenge. It was he that opened the scoring after just 55 seconds in this game. Two goals in the first five minutes. Spur in towards the six-yard box this time. Montgomery's there to head clear. Norton tries to help it further away and Howard now will clear onto halfway. There's Weber who gets his head to it. Off the blade striker and out for a Sheffield Wednesday throw-in. Seven to go to the break. An explosive start. It's settled a little bit. But it's that terrific strike from Marcus Tudgay that separates the two now. Spurs throw down the left, Tudgay gets his head to the ball and Montgomery forced to head behind for a Wednesday corner kick. John Pearson. Believe, that's what I'm saying to us, believe you can do it, I think we can get another goal. Just believe in yourselves, get that ball down, keep passing it out wide, get Michael Gray in, get Jermaine Johnson in, get on up for the set pieces, pick the second balls up, and believe in yourselves, we can get another goal. Michael Gray over the corner, Richard Wood and Mark Beavers up from the back. Gray in those fluorescent boots, 
with the corner in front of the cop at Bramall Lane. He chips one out of the area to Potter, who strikes on the volley. Didn't really catch it cleanly enough. Straight at Norton, but that was one off the training ground. And now it's Weber away down the right-hand side. Spur trying to chase him down. As United move it deep into the Wednesday half. Right-hand touchline, Norton in support on the inside, so too Holford. Holford just outside the penalty area, to the right of the D on his left, who's going to strike one, it's comfortable for Lee Grant, who drops on the ball and makes the save. Well, both teams working very hard, Wednesday having to get back there and, and defending numbers, looking at the amount of players that we've got forward, that's quite impressive, and that gives us an opportunity to get back into this game. It's the Sheffield Derby on BBC Radio Sheffield, and five live sports extras, Clark looks to flick the ball on. Cleared away by Bromby. Here's Lupoli who dragged United level on four minutes. Back to Naismith. Naismith just below us, slams one down the line, but way too much on that. And Buxton will allow the ball to run away for a goal kick to the house. I wonder how many times Potter's cracked a volley in from 40 yards with, with no players in between for that last corner. I think he's asking you a question, yeah. Keith. Well, I don't, I, I'm not understanding what he means, to be honest with you. I no, can't, the, the I can't corner. follow him. Yeah, the he's, corner. What about the corner, John? He's come right out. He's about 35 yards out. And there's loads yeah. of players. I just wondered how many times he's Possibly one of the worst corners I've it. seen. And we're not good at him, but why on earth would you want to go away from the goal? Even you should know that. Clip it onto the near post, he'll cause all kinds of teams problems. Wednesday throw, which Lewis Buxton will take. He got his first goal for the club last week in that one-all draw with Birmingham. Wednesday mid-table. Ten points off the playoffs, nine points above the relegation zone at the start of play. United fourth in the championship, looking to cement their place in this season's playoffs. Spur out to the left and Gray, who cuts in field. Bit of a slip from Norton. Gray strikes, hits Holford and Cannon's back here to Potter. But Wednesday looking quite strong and keeping United in their own half. Tudgay and now James O'Connor on Wednesday stroking the ball around now. Potter from the edge of the centre circle finding Tudgay. Kilgallen attempting to challenge but can't get there. Spur, left-hand side and now Gray in the sunshine. Norton goes across. Gray looks to cross him from deep. Norton, the Sheffield-born right back, will make the block and that will be a Wednesday throw-in Is that the short passing game you're on about Keith? Yes, to be fair, yeah I can recognise good football when I, when I see it unfortunately you don't have that same uh, gift but there you go no, that was it was good play and I think we're chasing the game and we're second to the ball so, yeah we're, we're, I'll be more than happy to get in at half-time if I'm being perfectly honest Wednesday, 2-1 up in the Sheffield derby at Bramall Lane here is Lupoli on his debut today for Sheffield United up against Lewis Buxton Buxton Got something on the ball, can he prevent the corner? He will, he'll slip it out for a throw instead, but it will be deep in the Wednesday half on the left, and Naismith will take, Lupoli makes himself available, given away to Jermaine Johnson, who crashes it up to halfway, where it's met by Matthew Kilgallen. Kilgallen on the blades left on the halfway line, closed down by Leon Clark, and Paddy Kenny has to come across to this near side, the blades keeper waits for the ball to run into the box. He can get two hands on it. Three minutes to go to half-time. As Kenny swings a high ball out to the blades right. Holford looks to flick it on. Richard Wood clears from the edge of the D. Drops in the centre circle where a firm header is won by Lee Bromby. Then Wood beats Lupoli to the ball. Now Howard back for Kilgallen. Kilgallen clips one down the left for Danny Webber. Neat flick for Howard. Now down the line for Gary Naismith. Can he get there before Beavers? Beavers crunches in with a tackle. Well, he got the ball. The great tackle. Yeah, it's no gone complaint. for a throw. Yeah, it was a well-timed tackle. Naismith got up. Oh, but... no, no, no. That's... Has he changed his mind, the referees? He's given United the free kick here. No, I thought uh, Wednesday player was a, a tad unlucky there. I thought he, he's got most of the ball. In, in, in his favour, the Sheffield United players just so, got up and not reacted to it, so... What's he seen afterwards, then, and who said something? I don't know, John. But, I can't yeah, hear him. No, the, here. no more. Beavers is there on the spot. He's let him run all the way back, and then he's pulled him back. So he must have changed his mind. Don't tell me he's going to book him when we've just seen the Wednesday player, Michael Gray, get done down here. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, it's a yellow card for Mark Beavers. It is a United free kick, just in from the byline, left-hand side, Stephen Quinn over it. United trailing 2-1 in the Sheffield derby, but Jermaine Johnson being told to move back the full 10 yards away from the free kick. United have several players waiting inside the box, but... To be fair, Wednesday have plenty back for this free kick at the Bramall Lane end of the ground. Quinn 
bends one in left foot and over the six yard box headed away by Tugge I think it was in there Howard challenging cleared away for a second time by Wednesday one back by Kyle Norton in the middle of the Sheffield Wednesday half he goes on a run Spur slides in but missed and now it's Kilgallen in a right winger's position looks to steer the cross in oh, well, the referee's yeah. now going to bring it back for the original foul on Kyle Norton yeah. he'll give United a free kick wide on the right I think he's brought it back because he knows Killer's not too good on his right foot <laughs> But uh, yeah, was, uh, to be fair, I thought it was a foul. I thought Norton's brought it down beautifully. Yeah, it was a foul, yeah. And uh, we, we've got another free kick. Quinney's got the responsibility again. Maybe we should just mix this up a little bit. Free kick then for Sheffield United. Out on the right hand side. Stephen Quinn to take it. Just outside the penalty area. United trying to find an equaliser just before the break. Left footer delivery from Quinn, curling over the six yard box, header away. It's going to drop here towards Montgomery, who sends it back to the edge of the penalty area. Loopily turns, hooks it over his shoulder. And again, it's easy for Lee Grant. One minute of out of time to be played at the end of the first half at the lane. United won Wednesday two. Twice now, Wednesday have led in this game. Leon Clark, left hand side, pushed back for Potter as Wednesday moved down the pitch. Now it's with Gray on the left, sends a high swirling ball into the Blades box, and Paddy Kenny will just take it under his crossbar. And looks to get United moving again. A big kick downfield. Holford the target. Flicks on. Danny Weber chases it down on the right edge of the penalty area. Turned out to Nick Montgomery. Chance to play the ball in square for Stephen Quinn on the edge of the box. He's challenged really well by Marcus Tudgate. You listen to BBC Radio Sheffield and Five Live Sports Extra in the closing stages of the first half in the Sheffield Derby. And Buxton's rolled in Johnson. Oh. And Kilgallen makes a block. He had to get there. Johnson was in the clear right hand side. Tied it up. Here is Lupley on halfway, given away to Lewis Buxton. Pushed back to Potter, down the line. Naismith gets there before Jermaine Johnson. Naismith got a little knock there as he went for the challenge. Nothing malicious, though. Potter, halfway line for Buxton. Challenge goes in from Howard, and it's played back into the Wednesday half where Richard Wood can send it back to his goalkeeper, Lee Grant. And there goes the half-time whistle. And at the moment, the double is on. Wednesday lead by two goals to one an explosive start to the first half in the Sheffield Derby when Tommy Spur crashed in in front of the cop after 55 seconds then on four minutes a two-row loopily heading in from a Greg Holford throw his first goal for the club on his debut but Marcus Tugay with a fine fine strike after 29 minutes gives Wednesday a 2-1 half time lead let's get a thought from John Pearson and first Keith Edwards well I've had no complaints I'm, I'm quite happy to, to hear the half time whistle I think Wednesday have, have brought the game to us I think they've bossed the midfield we've lost that midfield and that's where I'm most disappointed in we haven't been pissed to the ball and we've paid the price it was a, a fabulous goal every now and then you have to hold your hands up and say well that's a great strike but we were second best I've got to say that well I totally agree I thought uh, from Midland oh, I thought that. you would John and I don't blame you shut up a minute will you? <laughs> right from minute one we get off to a great start but I, I just thought we reacted poorly to go in one in front and we, we went a little bit nervous and allowed United to come back but credit again as soon as United score their goal we respond and we, was, we were controlling the game we were bossing the midfield we've got to get the ball out wide as I said before to Gray and to Johnson and we've done that and they've caused all sorts of problems and then Marcus Tudgay comes up with a wonder strike but he can look throughout the side at the moment and I keep going on about belief because I, I do believe that we can go on and, and in, not just win this game 2-1 if we go and play to our max we can go and score more goals I can understand why you're more than happy with that performance Johnny it was a good midfield performance that kept the ball better from our point of view Sheffield United need to, uh, to change things around I, I really do think this is where the manager earns his corn and, and change things around push people forward a little bit get the forwards, the three forwards a little bit closer together so they can link up midfield have got to settle a little bit more on the ball at this moment in time I have no complaints with that uh, first half well I have complaints with it but the scoreline is a true reflection of the game Sheffield Wednesday will defend this cop at Bramall Lane in the second half 31,000 in Bramall Lane 8,500 or so at Hillsborough what a day for Sheffield football and right now Sheffield is blue and white Will that change? Mark Halsey, your referee, about to kick things off. Has another quick glance at his watch. And then we'll be back underway in the second half of the Steel City derby. And Stephen Quinn strokes it back towards Kyle Norton. 
right footed he moves one down the right hand side it's out of play and Keith, is it a case of a good start now from the Blades to get them back on track? Well, the, the, the longer the game goes on, I think the passing will, will stray. We'll get a bit frustrated. So, yes, to answer your question, we need a good start. We need to, to push it, the ball into people's feet and, and get a little bit better movement. We've hardly ever mentioned Howard. He needs to get into this game. Ball down this right-hand side for the Blades. Out for a throw. Having watched the goals at half-time, how does Arturo Lupoli get a header on the six-yard box? I'll never know. Here is Halford to try and spear one into that six-yard box. He does just that. It's low, it's flat, headed away by Tommy Spur. Rather telegraphed, and then Montgomery will head back. Nodded away by Beavers this time. And now Kyle Norton will take possession for the Blades. He runs from right to left. He's almost running out of space as he sends the ball down the line, but he'll win a throw... Yeah. Well done, Norton. He doesn't waste too many passes. He's, uh, he's athletic and he, and he played the right ball there, as you say. He was running down an alley that he couldn't get anywhere, but he's made good use of it in the end. Blades with a throw in the sunshine. Three quarters of this pitch at Bramall Lane bathed in shadow. But bright sunshine on that left-hand side as the Blades try and deliver in. They'll win another throw, this time right by that left-hand corner flag. The referee's just got to watch uh, the player who's on Grant. And Quinn was on him before, and Quinn has just got hold of Grant round his arms, he, so he couldn't get his arms up. Sorry, Keith, I've just demonstrated. Long throw comes in again towards Kilgallen from post, header behind by Wood. And the Blades have a corner kick that Stephen Quinn can go and take on that left-hand side. Do you, do you sense this is what it's going to be like second half, Keith? Well, it, it'll have to be down this end a lot for us to get back into the game, but we've, we've got to make set players count. 2-1 Wednesday lead, but it's the Blades who are in the early ascendancy in this second session. Quinn with this corner kick, it's floated to the back post. Halford with a header. He was battling, he was shirt-tugging, and he's nodded it into the cop. And it's a goal kick for Wednesday. 2-1 they lead, Lee Grant to take. John Pearson. I just wonder whether the referee would have... Do you think he would have given a foul there by Alford or, or did he just let it go? I'm not sure. I thought he was all over uh, Mark Beavers. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yep. Well, yes, I think uh, it, it looked to be fair, but Alford's got, uh, he's got his header in. It was a better corner kick. I, I dislike immensely to see goalkeepers coming for corners. Uh, you know, that, that, that's a, that rep represents a poor corner, so we need to cut Took, that out. He tucks one over the top. Here's Leon Clark trying to get in. Great defending by Kilgallen. He's upended by Clark, and the referee will allow play to continue, but very nearly Clark got in, only the pace of Kilgallen snuff that one out as the blades clear along now Weber can he get on this in the box he's at the byline good defensive play by Beavers and then he hurdles the snowy advertising hoardings and uh, stops himself falling into the Bramall Lane Cop I think he'll be quite happy about that well, those chaps behind the goal didn't seem very happy there <laughs> what was wrong with them those chaps yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't go all posh with me John I don't think you'll be able to keep that up pal <laughs> uh, is that the kind of thing United have got to try and do though use the pace of Lupoli and, and Weber to try and get them in around the sides yeah you have to get round the, the back of the Wednesday defence but you have to do it with a good quality passing and unfortunately that was just a flick on okay from from the likes of Halford who will win, a, who will win that aerial battle but you can't just rely on that You've, if you play into feet and then thread balls through you'll find it's more successful but at this morning time we're going fairly long and, and that doesn't suit our play today direct from Kenny from this it's flicked into the box by Sheffield Wednesday now Quinn from range he bounces good save diving to his right hand side from Lee Grant never really going to be the power on that to really make him struggle but he did have to dive to his right and he makes a comfortable stop in the end 2-1 the scoreline as Lee Grant clears away the Wednesday goalkeeper it's 5 Live Sports Extra it's BBC Radio Sheffield and now it's Michael Gray right hand side level with the edge of the box he's attacking the byline Gray with those green boots on good challenge coming in from Montgomery Michael Gray has been a joy to watch since his arrival at Hillsborough every single game every single game makes you realise how good a side Wolves are though if they don't need him here comes a floated cross into the box it falls to Clark oh! at the post thundered a volley and it's ricocheted out for a blade throw on the right hand side desperate Absolute. what a chance desperate he's good little flick on and Clark's reacted superbly great volley kind of nothing outside of the post well it's one post each yeah that's true <laughs> but uh, 
once again second to the ball if you don't win that first ball you, you must pick up the second ball and unfortunately from defensively we haven't done that Leon Clark will be absolutely gutted yeah, I thought with that last chance when he got Kilgallen got back I thought he tried to use his body to, to stop Kilgallen and then compose himself where he might have just been better running onto it and Kilgallen then would have been made into a choice of having to tackle him and maybe pulling him down Halford with a good flick Loopley can't get her ahead of Richard Wood the Wednesday skipper does well and then Tommy Spur completes the clearance to halfway but Norton nicks it back for the Blades uses good footwork and then raises one down the right hand side good challenge coming in from Mark Beavers and another throw to the Blades down this right hand side and two different styles of football evident between these two sides as United throw this one in front post it's cleared away and then hooked on to halfway by James O'Connor and now here's Leon Clark he's got the height and the strength to beat Naismith in the air he couldn't get onto the second ball what's he done? what's he done? he appeared appear to have hurt his heart, arm here the United fans aren't happy and Paddy Kenny will play on he sends it long headed away by Beavers now there is Michael Gray nods it back to Buxton that was composed and now Buxton will send one high up in the air Wednesday not bothered about clearing the ball into touch and now Naismith will send a high ball down the line it's a loopy one the fans don't like that they want to see United get this ball down. The Wednesday fans will be delighted because it will give Wednesday possession and they then get a throw on that right-hand side. You've only got to look at our forward line today. Why are we just helping the ball into the, into the Wednesday half by knocking it high? We're not going to win, get anything from that and that's the state of the game. We're going we're gonna to see a little change and I don't blame it. It needs a change. Arturo Lupoli is the man that will come off. The Blades fans are booing. Well, he scored the goal, he's drifted out of the game. I don't know whether that's uh, based on tiredness or it's coming across. But, yeah, to be fair, the, the lad's done well and understandable. But I'm quite excited about this young man coming on. He, he looked great in midweek, he was very direct. Well, you look at that team now. Let's see if we've got any common sense to our, our pattern of play now. You've got Ward and Weber. So you've got to push the ball into feet or push the ball through to in, in, in between the fullback and the defence. See if we do that. James O'Connor for Wednesday puts the ball in the air, intercepted by Halford. Now here's Stephen Quinn, rakes one out to the right, cut out well by Beavers. Eight minutes gone in the second half. It's BBC Radio Sheffield. It's the Steel City derby, and Wednesday are leading at Bramall Lane by two goals to one. A thunderbolt from Marcus Tudgate, one of the best goals I've seen this season. Here's Paddy Kenny. It's uh, sent along, and then Jermaine Johnson. Well, we've not got the, we've not got into this second half yet, Seth. We haven't got the ball down and started passing it. United have actually uh, dominated this opening seven minutes or so. And we've got to start getting our belief back and getting the balls out wide again. You know, and getting Potter and O'Connor within that midfield. We've competed well enough, but uh, we need to get that ball down and uh, start taking control of this second half. Stephen Quinn finds Halford with the aid of a challenge, but Wednesday can see the free kick. And this Keith Edwards in, is in a great situation. Yep, yeah, we need a, somebody who's, who's confident over the ball. It's in a good area. We're, we're lacking a little bit of height today for, for obvious reasons. We're, we're missing one or two bigger players, but we've got to try and make up with it with, with quality balls into the box. Last time Wednesday did the double over the blades. First World War as Jermaine Johnson is getting in trouble. He won't go. Uh, he's going to his, his staff go and get booked. He won't go 10 yards back, now eventually he does. And the Blades have a free kick, level with the edge of the box. 2-1 down as Quinn sends this one in. Doesn't beat the first man. Poor really from Stephen Quinn and then oh. he wins another free kick. Well, what did Jermaine Johnson do wrong there? Well, I see a great deal wrong with it, personally. No, I didn't in the, in the favour of Sheffield Wednesday, but they, they seem to allow player to go on and then referees pulled it up. But it's a free kick back in the same area. It's just well, daft. Let's hopefully we'll make a better job of this. Take two, Brian Howard this time with his left peg will have a go. Same position, right hand side, level with the edge of the box. Whip this one in, better quality into the six yard box. Good defensive header from Wednesday and then cleared away by Gray. Quinn picks it up on that left hand side. It'll be a throw to Sheffield United, but that, much better delivery. That was a much better ball. And am I asking too much for that ball to be knocked into that area with confidence and with base? I don't think I am. Bromby with a long throw, he sends a loopy one in front post, flicked by uh, Halford, nearly fell to Ward, 
Wednesday clear, it's one way traffic right now, and it's Lee Bromby on the left wing. Oh, oh. strong challenge comes in from O'Connor. He's going to get a booking for that. He's a bit late. I don't think it was very malicious. Mark Halsey was Johnny on the spot. No, John Pearson. I've got no complaints about that one, uh, Seth. He is late. He's, it's a foul, and it's going to be a booking. I've got no complaints with that one. I've got complaints with the first one with Mark Beavers, and I've got complaints that the United player didn't get booked down here. James O'Connor pulled away to one side to have a word with the referee. Later on BBC Radio Sheffield, we have the whole of Blackpool Doncaster Rovers as the yellow card is metered out. We're going to have to get hold of this ball soon, Seth. There's too many free kicks and too many throw-ins coming into our box. We've seen it happen a lot, John, this year, haven't we? Wednesday have led games and then sat back on their haunches. Can they be resolute enough as Howard delivers in again? Flick header, break six-yard box. Weber's going to sprint out to the left. We'll hold the ball in play. Danny Weber again, challenge, good foot in there from Michael Gray. And the Blades have another throw by the corner flag. Yeah, let's be fair, it's a good response from, from Sheffield United. They've come out of the second half with a little bit more determination, a little bit more thought, and they've been fist of the ball on a few occasions. Here's Danny Weber from the short throw. They did something different this time. It's with Lee Bromby, left-footed, can't beat the first man as he sends it in. Now Carl Morton from a long way out, tries the volley, goes in the end, seven or eight yards wide from 35-plus yards. And that's not going to trouble Lee Grant. He'll get the goal kick and the chance to re relieve the pressure, really, from a Wednesday perspective. But the Blades still not really forcing any clear cut saves. Mind you, neither keeper has had to make no. a, a save in this match. No, you're right, uh, Seth. I think we, we need to get some more on target. I won't be too critical of, of uh, Norton in, in that situation. The ball sat up for him, and I think he's had a, an excellent game. Carl Norton has got a bit of a head injury. Now they've both clashed. I think Jermaine Johnson's gone for the header and they've banged heads. He looks as though he's holding his, but as you said, Norton's come off worse. Poor old Dennis Pettit, the physio, was all the way by the far corner flag. He's had to sprint half the length of the field. He'll be sort of shattered when he gets there, but he'll give out a little bit of treatment. Later on Five Live Sports Extra, we're live in Jamaica. England against the West Indies, day three. Ball by ball coverage from the Test Match special team. Some great stuff down there as well. Can England come back? Well, this is a, an intriguing one. 12 minutes gone in the second half. Sheffield United 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. Your expert summarises are John Pearson and Keith Edwards. And Keith, I would imagine you are the happier of the two up here right now. Uh, for the second half performance, yes, but not overall. I think John more than happy than me, but it, it's, it's a performance that I'm not happy with. I'm glad we've changed it around because that wasn't working. Quinney's gone out on the left, Ward's come up front. And we need to be a little bit more ambitious, we need to push pit bodies forward. And, but more than anything, I, I'm disappointed that we've lost the midfield battle and I think that's the difference between the two sides. Kyle Norton has got a big lump on his head. He's got a towel at the moment, trying to stem some of the bleeding. I wonder whether a substitute will be required for the Blades. Of course, they do have the perfect one in Sunji High. But I don't think Kyle Norton, who grew up about a mile away from Bramall Lane, will want to come off. No, he's a tough uh, tough little lad and he's having a great season, got a great future ahead of him. And uh, it looks as if both players, I'm pleased to say, have, have recovered from that head injury. The England under-21 international. Just has a quick hold of his nose. We're going to have a drop ball to get us back underway. It's a drop ball won by Darren Potter. He comes forward. He's had a, a relatively quiet game for me as Howard gets a foot in, ball out of play. It's a throw for Sheffield Wednesday. Just had a little message from Lee Bullen there. Must be listening up there. Former Wednesday captain. Come on, you blue and white wizards. As the ball is thrown back in by Wednesday. They're on the left-hand side and it's out of play from James O'Connor. And now the Blades can throw the ball down the line. It's with Danny Weber, who does really well to control a, a missile into his chest. Ball knocked over the top. Stephen Quinn's there. Lee Grant's first one out. And he belts it into the stands. Showed good athleticism there, Lee Grant. Yeah, did really well. That's what I want my goalkeeper to do. Sweep up behind that back four. Anything in between. Come and get it. Take charge. Kill Gallon and Bromby in the area as the ball is sent in by the Blades from the throat. Wednesday have got a one-on-one -on -one if they use it well. It's with Leon Clark on halfway. He's got Gray all the way out on the right hand side. That's where it goes. The blades have funneled back, but still Michael Gray keeps possession. 
He now moves it. It's great footwork and great football as well as Jamie Ward fouls him. The referee will allow play to continue. It's with Potter. Potter moves it to the left and Spur. Now Tommy Spur helps it down the line to O'Connor. Back towards Johnson, who's on the left. Jermaine Johnson... The Jamaican to the edge of the area, good body position from Clark, spins away to his left, clips one back post, nobody there, it's going to roll out for a Sheffield United throw, will it? No, Naismith holds in, and now it's down the line towards Stephen Quinn. Quinn oh! has clipped there by Potter, and that'll be another yellow card. I thought it was O'Connor at first, thank God he's Potter. You're not going to send him off for that. No, it should, hopefully not, Doesn't the game doesn't deserve that. It was slightly late, yes, but... That's the first time that we've got the ball down in this second half, and, and it's a great turn from Leon Clark. He's done absolutely superb on the edge of the box there and stood it up at the far post, but what he wants, he wants him at the far post, he wants to be there as well. That's a great chance for a big centre-forward, and uh, unfortunately there was nobody else there to finish that off. Great skill by Leon on, on the edge of the box and good build-up. We'll want to see more of that. That's, what, that's when we're at our best. There was late drama here last year in the Steel City derby. That was when James Beatty, with a thunderbolt, managed to seal a draw for Sheffield United. Wednesday won't want to throw it away again as it's cleared by Richard Wood, then popped forward by Montgomery. Flick header comes and now Beavers loses out to Weber though. Beavers should have done better there. And now Jermaine Johnson in possession, just outside his own area. Good play by Johnson. Oh, he's wriggled free. Now he's through the centre circle. Jermaine Johnson, can he get his head up? He's got his head down, though. Charges towards the edge of the box. He won't beat his man. Wanted a penalty, and now Kyle Norton will clear away. Only as far as Tommy Spur, who heads forward. O'Connor, muscled out, though, by Nick Montgomery. He's upended, and that will be a blaze free kick on the edge of their own box. It's a great run from Jermaine, but he's got two people on his right-hand side and maybe he could have just found one of them. Got, he just ran nowhere in the end. Blades don't deserve it right now, Keith Edwards. Well, we've, I think we've started the second half a lot brighter than we, we ended the first half, and I think we've been on top, we've passed the ball. On, on a couple of occasions, we've just had two free kicks and we've knocked him straight to uh, Jamie Ward, and he's not going to win that aerial battle, but I think we have moved the ball around the pitch a lot better. High ball forward, it's chested down by Bromby. Oh, sliding challenge, he did just enough to get there. There was a thought of handball as Ward has a nice one too, and then Howard gives possession away, and the home fans are not happy right now. Here's Leon Clark stretching down the left channel. He's held up possession well. He does this very well, Leon Clark. Done can't, really well today, Seth. Done really well. Can't beat Matt Kilgallen, though, on the outside. Throw to Wednesday. The, the first goal scorer, Tommy Spur, will take. 2-1 the scoreline. It's BBC Radio Sheffield and 5 Live Sports Extra. Steel City Derby. S2 is the location. Chilly temperatures in South Yorkshire. As Potter shows from the throw. Now helped into the box. It's headed away. And now Potter brings it down. There's an offside against Sheffield Wednesday on the edge of the area. And the Blades can get a free kick. Look at it. that that's my complaint. We've got a free kick on the edge of the box. Every Sheffield United player has turned the back and just ran forward. <clears throat> we have no intentions of passing the ball out whatsoever. Carl Norton allows the ball to go out of play on halfway. He throws up towards Halford who gets a flick. Cleared away though by Mark Beavers. Now headed forward by Naismith. Ward won't win it in the air and Montgomery takes a first time ball forward. Surely that was a free kick. United's way, but not given. And now Leon Clark at the other end. It's Kilgallen there, good defending from him. Cleared away by Kenny. He'll swing his right foot through it, and that will go out for a throw to Sheffield Wednesday. And it's a bit predictable and a bit panicked for me from Sheffield United Wednesday. John, even though they've been under pressure, look a bit more composed. Well, they do when we get the ball up, but again, I'm going back to that belief that I think we can get more goals, but we seem content just to sit back and invite that little bit of pressure. But... Can we do it for 45 minutes? Here's Halford, using his strength as the ball goes out of play in the Blades' half. He doesn't know where to throw it, so he passes to Montgomery, who volleys to nobody. Headed away by Wood. Montgomery brings it down, and then he flicks it towards Naismith, who in turn helps it back to Paddy Kenny. He shapes to clear away, and now Will, right-footed under pressure, up towards Halford. Chests it down. Halford, can he get past O'Connor? He helps one out to the left. And I just don't feel the 4-3-3 shape is helping the Blades. I think Wednesday have just got a bit more in midfield, haven't they, with the, the two wide men? Well, I don't think our system... I don't 
never liked the system of having two wide men, but we've got two lads up front today, and now we're playing a 4-4-2. We've got to give them better service. We, we're just knocking a hopeful ball. To be fair to Halford there, he took the responsibility in trying to bring it down. Beavers scampers after Weber, who brings it down in the right channel. Good run from Ward in the box, but it goes back to Montgomery, and now here's Weber again. Weber is faced up by two blue and white shirts. Norton tries to nutmeg Johnson, but Johnson has his way with him and then moves it towards Sudgay, who opens play up on Wednesday, they're going to break here. They've got plenty forward. If Gray can get his head up, Johnson's in a great place. Instead, he clipped it down the left. And Kilgallen clears, he'll win himself a throw off the ricochet, off Lewis Buxton. And Jermaine Johnson made a super run there, John Paulson. Well, you know, he's got to appreciate how other players feel now when he's done that little run he's just done. You know, I, I don't think Michael Gray's deliberately ignored him. He's just not seen him. He's tried to put the uh, player in down the right-hand side. But, you know, that's, that's how it goes, Jermaine. We've just got to get on with it. Lee Hendry is stripping off in the dugout beneath us. He'll be introduced to the Steel City derby and you'd expect he would be a player that would thrive in this atmosphere yes he's got the experience and I, th I think he'll be coming on for Quinn I think he's he's struggling a little bit he's gone out on the on, on the flank and I think we just need somebody who, who's got a little bit more composure high ball forward looking for Halford he's got it in towards Stephen Quinn headed down on the edge of the box can break towards Montgomery left footed helps it back in Ward's there finds uh, the figure of Halford edge of the box Halford good feet but cleared away by Wednesday as they close down really well Here's Norton spreading wide. Tommy Spur, first man out to Danny Webber. I think Danny Webber's found it quite difficult today. Now he picks out Montgomery again. Edge of the box. Can Montgomery get a cross in? Tries to. He'll win himself a throw on the right-hand side. Well, we're getting plenty of bodies forward and they're getting into good positive positions. Just the final ball. Taken quickly. Here's Halford again. He's on his left boot. Loads forward for the blades. He'll fashion one in left footed. Into the flick header just over from Ward. Got free, seven yards out. Should have done better. Yeah, yeah. If he hits the target, there it would be difficult to not see that going in. But yep, yeah, great position, good ball in. That's a, that's so much more encouraging. A well done to Ward. All right, disappointed that he's missed it, but it was a, he's got into a great position there. Let's get a thought from John Pearson, and then with Wednesday leading the Blades by two goals to one at Bramall Lane, Paul Walker will take you through to half to, to full time. Well, I'm the happiest out of me and Keith at the moment. United. Uh, uh, they're throwing things forward without really threatening. That was a, a, probably the best chance they've just had. But I just don't want us to sit back. I think we can go on and get more goals. I believe in us and I want the players just to believe that a little bit more. Here is Danny Weber on the Sheffield United right as United head towards the cup at Bramall Lane in the second half. Beavers slides the ball out for a Sheffield United throw. And this is level with the penalty area. Right-hand side. Holford to take it. Kilgallen and Bromby up from the back as it's thrown over the six-yard box over the head of Jamie Ward and Wednesday clear out to the edge of the D and then as a bit of a slip from Montgomery hits Michael Gray in the back as he fell and O'Connor tidies and slides it to the left and James O'Connor and Johnson looks to stride over that left-hand side and Kilgallen makes a good tackle well, it, Norton. Was, it was Norton that did the initial tackle play continuing here's Spur tight to the touchline on the left plays it down the touchline, goes out of play and United will get a throw but still, it's Wednesday who lead the Sheffield Derby by two goals to one. Just not got going in this second half yet Keith? Well I think we've produced better football in the second half we've got uh, a little bit more imagination about us but I fear for us on the break Now Tudgay looks to stride away down the left and Kilgallen comes over stabs the ball out of play and I just wonder now with United trying desperately to get an equaliser what kind of gaps they're going to leave well, at the back for, for the likes of Tudgay and Johnson and Clark yeah. to move into well we've seen it on several occasions it's just not quite happened that final ball there I mean Marcus Tudgay looking for Leon Clark just couldn't get it and the, the tackle came in but that's, that's the problem that United are faced with <laughs> Tommy Spur with a throw from the left for Sheffield Wednesday into the box it goes towards the near post Tudgay tries to flick on pops out to the edge of the penalty area and James O'Connor who hooks it over the top again Holford heads away and a diving header a brave header from James O'Connor heads to the left Johnson tangling with Norton and what's that gone for? it's gone for a blade throw next to the corner flag on the right hand side we have played 24 minutes of the second half at Bramall Lane in the Steel City Derby here on BBC Radio Sheffield and 5 Live Sports Extra United 1, Wednesday 2 is the score
Bromby's throw down the right hand touchline over the head of Holford header won by Spur and now it's Tudgate who's onto the ball at the bar line pulls it in towards the near post and Norton safety first steers behind for a Wednesday corner kick well at last a little bit of pressure from us I mean uh... A little bit of panic in there by Norton, there was nobody around him, he had plenty of time, but he's kicked the ball away, he's given us the corner, I think Potter's going to, Potter's going to take it from this left-hand side, we could just do with a nice little break from one of these uh, situations. Corner kick Wednesday then, on the left, Darren Potter to take it, Richard Wood is in the six-yard box as Potter sends the ball in deep to the far stick, it's glanced away by Halford, and that will go for a throw on the Wednesday right-hand side and Michael Gray races across to take it. After this game on BBC Radio Sheffield, we want your calls at 0114279669. Following us on 5 Live Sports Extra, it's the Cricket England against the West Indies at Sabina Park. Just after half-past two, coverage starts as Gray looks to cross in from the right. He wins a corner kick to the house. Well done, Michael Gray. And Wednesday can apply some pressure here in front of their supporters behind that goal. Gray over this corner kick over on that right hand side left foot of delivery very flat bubbles up Clark's up there looking to flick it on Beavers up inside the penalty area as well United clear away sent forward by Potter bounces on the edge of the D Johnson and now Tuggy on the volley well, look at and it's it. comfortable for Paddy Kenny and it's nudged out to Howard but it's sloppy from United and they just cannot get their passing together Webber gives it away for a second time and Richard Wood steers it back to Lee Grant. Moans and groans from the home fans here at the lane as Kilgallen wins the ball in the air off Tudgay. Now Clark oh. giving away to Montgomery. Norton at right back can slam it down this right touchline. But it's a thumping header away by Tommy Spur who's got winded as he cleared that ball right where it hurts as well. And now there's going to be a change for Sheffield United and it's the Sheffield-born striker Billy Sharp who's coming on and he will replace Danny Weber. Keith Edwards, your thoughts on the change? Well, I just hope it's going to be sharp his day. It, for me, he's, he's looked quite good of late. He's, he comes into the team. He's been a little bit hard treated why in, in many ways, but I just wonder if a, a Sheffield lad can bring us back into this game. Lee Bromby with a throw in for United from halfway. Down the line it goes, flicked on by Holford. Beavers clears away from Billy Sharp, who at one point might have joined Sheffield Wednesday. He played under the Wednesday manager, Brian Laws, at Scunthorpe. He's got a lot of goals there as well. But he is a Sheffield United boy at heart, and he's on the field now. It's a short throw, Henderson to Howard, just outside the penalty area. Curls one in, Ward trying to flick it on, but Beavers repels it away with his head. Montgomery chases it down, but United are almost back on the halfway line now as Montgomery sends it down that left touchline for Billy Sharp, who tussles with Buxton and looks to weave his way oh. down the far side. But he's uh, run the ball out and conceded a throw. Quinn will take. Thrown to Montgomery. Montgomery back out to Quinn on the left-hand side. Gray goes across to close him down. Stephen Quinn for Sheffield United tries to get on the outside and whip the ball in, but only succeeds in putting the ball into the cop. Well, that's it. He's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to get beyond the player on the outside of the player, but the final ball wasn't good enough in the game. And we've got to we've got to mix these things up a little bit. We, we've got small centre-forwards. We can't just keep knocking the ball into the box and get something from it. That's just hopeful. If one of them can come out with shorter feet and get a little bit of a turn, it, turn in and around the box, it might be a little bit more effective. 95 years since Sheffield Wednesday lasted the double over their big city rivals. On course for it as we talk now. Kenny clears away onto halfway, header one by Jamie Ward, but it's Land of the Giants back there for Sheffield Wednesday. They win it in the air. Here is Gray on the right hand side. Closed down by Jamie Ward, who makes the tackle. And that's going to be an hour throw just inside Blades territory on the right hand side. Wednesday ahead on 55 seconds in this game, a two row loopily. Equalised for Sheffield United on four minutes. The Marcus Tudgay with a thunderbolt on 29, giving Wednesday 2 1 lead. And it's Wednesday tacking now into the box. And Naismith can see the ball away. Half whale, and that's a neat ball from Billy Sharp. And now United can break with Brian Howard inside right position. Red and white shirts flowing forward in support. Brian Howard on the edge of the penalty area. It strikes, blocks, and it goes up into the air. And Wednesday look to clear. James O'Connor will welly it down the other end. 
And Marcus Tudgay in pursuit. Kilgallen the favourite, but Tudgay well wants to take it off him. He's won a throw. Superb closing down by Marcus Tudgay. I hope we're going to learn our lesson and not just invite United onto us all for the rest of this second half. We've got to take control. United, to me, look a very poor side this afternoon. They'll never have a better chance of winning this game. Great ball from Sharp, wasn't it? His first touch was just into his into Howard. Unfortunately, once again, Howard hasn't made the best choice. He, if it had looked to, to the left with his right foot, he could have just switched play. He had two options there. Unfortunately, he's just been closed down. Quickness of thought has been a little bit of a problem for our midfield today. 15 minutes left to play, but Wednesday deservedly on top in the Sheffield derby. Well, I've just heard it's absolutely buzzing back at Hillsborough, so come on, all you blue and white wizards, keep us cheering us on to the end of this match. Just a fraction of a 9,000 watching on the big screen there at Hillsborough today. Here is Buxton just in from the corner flag, sliding in was Naismith. It's gone behind for a goal kick. That's the end result. Can Sheffield United find an equaliser, or can Wednesday see the game out and claim a famous victory? Lee Hendry coming on shortly for Sheffield United cleared by United here is Sharp tackled easily by Potter who's been really sensible with the ball in that Wednesday midfield today whenever he's got it and he's now been challenged unfairly and Wednesday get a free kick and who will Lee Hendry replace Keith Edwards who do you think is coming off Stephen Quinn I would say Quinny because uh, Henry would go out would be fairly comfortable on the left uh, possibly cut inside it there is a goal in him on occasion so I don't blame the manager for gambling there Buxton with this Wednesday free kick strikes it forward on the right boot into the United penalty area and it goes beyond everybody and behind for the goal kick and here on BBC Radio Sheffield and five live sports extra Doncaster Rovers at Blackpool following this game on BBC Radio Sheffield it's the cricket on sports extra England West Indies here is Howard who hooks the ball over the top and Billy Sharp giving chase and Grant was smartly off his line he drops it Stephen Quinn might profit foul foul well I just looked for a moment didn't think he was going to give the foul on Lee Grant it had to be a foul Paul there's a push that's well I do obviously we didn't hear the whistle but yeah. Grant's it... down is it Mark Beavers that's... no it's not Mark I Richard Wood is. is it Richard Wood to be fair I think the referee seen it very early we just didn't hear it and the players didn't quite react to it either but referee got it right well United want to make their change now and they will make it and Lee Hendry's coming into the action experienced midfield player who's played at the very highest level but hasn't always had it his way yeah. at Sheffield United and Brian Howard has been taken off well he hasn't done it today I thought Quinney was struggling a little bit with his hamstring but yeah, he gets it. Henry comes on and gets that opportunity to play there. And well, he's gone out left, and, and Quinney's come back into that middle. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think Quinn and Montgomery has worked again, and it's, he's changed it to coming back into that middle. I don't see that myself. Grant takes the free kick. Kilgallen gets his head to the ball. Here's Hendry. First touch of the game. Kilgallen is down injured at the moment as Naismith thumps the ball onto halfway, but plays continuing here. Ward rising and Beavers can see the ball downfield neat chest off by Tudgay who was looking for Gray and now Potter Tudgay on the right hand side challenged by Stephen Quinn referee gives Wednesday a free kick to the gallons back on his feet and uh, just hobbling slightly but Wednesday got a free kick out on the right hand side and Brian Laws will be very very happy with what his players have given him today does have a great knack of getting his players up for this fixture Yet to lose a Sheffield derby. Kevin Blackwell, yet to win one. Potter and Gray over the free kick. Right-hand side, Potter will swing the ball in right-footed. Kyle Norton with an easy headed clearance. Sent back to the edge of the penalty area by Potter again. United clear once more, but still Wednesday come forward. Johnson in those uh, red boots finding Tudgay. Breaks down the midfield a little bit, but still Wednesday keep possession. It's Tommy Spur who opened the scoring after 55 seconds. He loses it. 
And here's Nick Montgomery to play it down the right-hand side. Into the chest of Billy Sharp, who does well and hooks it over the top. Holford will chase it down. It's a bouncing ball on the edge of the penalty area. Holford comes away with it. Now Hendry into the box. Chance for Jamie Ward. Took a touch, and that allowed Gray to get in and take it off his toes. If he hits that first time, United equalise. Yeah, it was, uh, well, it was half a chance, wasn't it? And his first touch wasn't good enough, to be fair. Well done to Gray for getting back and defending there. But that's better from United. Naismith down the left for Jamie Ward, midway inside the Wednesday half. Now Sharp, left edge of the penalty area. Out wide it goes, Hendry outside of the right boot, crosses in and Lee Grant dives onto the ball, six yards out, Holford was waiting to pounce. It's a very good ball in, you know, and Hendry's shouting to people, get across defenders, how many times have you heard me say that recent weeks? And that was a great ball on the outside of his foot, just needed somebody to, to gamble, run across defenders near post, and you get a little touch of that, and that's 2-2. Ten minutes left in the Steel City showdown. Wednesday leading by two goals to one at Sheffield United. Here's Montgomery motoring down the left, runs straight into Lewis Buxton. And Potter tidies. Kilgallen's there to make a touch. Now Gray, who's been very impressive. But Kilgallen can thump it high down the left again. Still Wednesday looking to defend as Hendricks Offside. rolls it down the left flank. Should have got up. He didn't come, but the goal kick was going out for a goal kick. I'm waiting now for somebody to go around the troops. You know, a captain, I want a captain on our side now who's going to go around and ask for every last ounce of effort during these last 10 minutes because we've just sunk, we've just sunk a, 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 a little bit off the pace. We're inviting United onto us and they, they've put us under a lot of pressure without really threatening us. We're, we're better than this. Grant clears downfield, Kilgallen beats Tudgate to it. Now James O'Connor shins the ball out to the right and Michael Gray will struggle to control that one. I think Steve Watson's going to come on in a moment. Amazing conversation right now with Brian Laws, the Wednesday veteran. Naismith with a Sheffield United throw, John Street side of the ground. Down the left it goes, can Billy Sharp get on the end of this? The answer is no, because Richard Wood thumps it into the stand, but it will be a blade throw in, which Lee Hendry... Wanted to take quickly, but Gary Naismith has other ideas. He comes forward from left back and throws short down the left for Billy Sharp, just outside the area. Naismith now can curl a ball in. Holford gets his head to the ball, but can't get the header on target. Had too much traffic ahead of him as well. And Lee Grant claims it, and Tommy Spurs now gone down inside his own penalty area. John Pearson. Lee Grant smashes the ball out. Kicks it out, but we won't get that ball back. Well, I didn't see anything, I don't know what happened. He's getting to his feet now. But Tommy, you either stay down or you get up and play, mate. Well, if people's nails haven't been bitten to the quick already, they certainly will be in the next eight minutes. So they're going to be absolute jubilation for one half of Sheffield. Or Sheffield United might well be celebrating snatching a late equaliser. Which way is it going to swing? I wonder. Hendry, halfway line. Out to the left and kill Gallon, who's up from centre half. But playing as a left winger right now as we look. Hendry once again, out to kill Gallon. He's made a good run to the byline. Can he wrap his foot round it and cross into the near post? He can. Richard Wood just slices the ball straight up into the air, heads away for a second time. And there's Potter who turns and hooks the ball over halfway to relieve the pressure. Now Clark flicks it off to Tudgay as Wednesday looked to counter, push forward, but Clark wasn't sure where the ball had gone. And Lee Bromby intercepts, and this is Kyle Norton on the Sheffield United right. Played over halfway, Beavers just heads away from Ward, but unfairly, says the referee and linesman between them, Blades free kick. Crowd won him that free kick. <laughs> Get out of here. Jamie Wall's done ever so well. He's got across the defender, and he's put him under a little bit of pressure. He's only... He's nowhere near that five ball. Five. But uh, he's, he's got in, in the face of the centre half and won his team a free kick. I think United have performed a lot better second half. The passing's been better, and Henry's come on and made a little bit of a difference. Free kick taken. Quinn to Norton, right hand side. Norton trying to get round Jermaine Johnson, who makes the block. It will be. Oh, it should be. But it's not. I thought it was going to be a corner kick to United, but it's a goal kick. I was hopeful, but uh, I think the, the lines win the referee. Oh, I have to say, all had a great game. They've controlled this derby match very well. and I think he got it right there. I wasn't expecting a corner kick. There'll be 30,000 watching this one at Bramall Lane. 9,000 on the big screen back at Hillsborough. Who will be on the edge of their seats right now. Tudgate for Sheffield Wednesday. Edge of the box, trying to turn the ball into the feet of Leon Clark. But United defend it well. 
Norton looks to clear. Good closing down from Tudgay as Norton looked to smash that ball downfield. Now Bromby playing against his former club, of course, wins a throw. That disappoints me, Paul, when you, you see players trying to knock the ball forward and they got closed down. They should be aware of that and they should be knowing that the, the players got in, in in between them and it's just going to hit them. Have a trick or two, pull, you know, pull around and try something else. United won Wednesday too as Holford plays it on the deck cleverly into the feet of Billy Sharp. Billy Sharp surrounded by blue and white shirts as he plays it into the six yard box, needed a touch. Buxton did make a touch but it's gone for a corner kick. Great ball in from Sharp. Well, I've been praising Sharp here on many, many occasions. What a great turn, and that's, that was good football from United. Playing to people's strengths, into feet, let them turn in the box and cause them problems. Well done, Billy Sharp. Corner kick, which Lee Hendry will take right-footed. Very flat, Sharp made contact, come behind. Five minutes, five minutes separate Sheffield Wednesday from a famous derby double. Sheffield United, time running out for them to equalise. John Pearson, how are you feeling? I'm so nervous, Paul, I can't speak. I need, we need to get behind these players. <laughs> we've seen it last week when we were playing Birmingham and we've invited so much onto us this half, but so far United haven't been good enough to capitalise and they're not a good side. But we're inviting them. We, we, can, we should have been two or three up. We should have come out in this second half and uh, just got another goal and just eased my nerves. Wednesday in possession with Tudgate. Spur sends it down the left for Jermaine Johnson, tangling with Montgomery. The latter came out on top, and now the referee's given Sheffield United a free kick. It's a little bit tasty. Away to the left hand side, Jermaine Johnson wanting to get involved. Brian Laws will be urging him to move away and calm down, he got sent off in this fixture last season, remember, along with uh, Matthew Kilgallen pleased to say that both sides have kept 11 men on the field as Kenny takes the free kick, O'Connor wins the ball in the air and heads over halfway now Montgomery wins it on the halfway line Norton looks to clear, good closing down from Tudgay ricochets back to Paddy Kenny but Keith, I've got to be honest, I can't see where a United goal is coming from well, right now. I, I think we've performed a lot better second half. We've, we've moved the ball around a little bit better. Uh, the movement's been a little bit more uh, positive in, in many respects, but I do take on board what you're saying. We haven't had too many clear cuts at goal. We've had half chances, but it's been a better second half performance. I think Wednesday, credit to them, have been resilient, have used the ball well, and most importantly, have won the midfield battle here at the lane today. Here's Norton two great goals as well to bring into it Norton clears down the right you're listening to BBC Radio Sheffield and five live sports extra in this Derby Day affair Sheffield Wednesday on top and leading Norton on the right looks to curl a ball into the Wednesday penalty area steered away by the left leg of Beavers but still United come again Hendry let it run he thought Holford was there he wasn't and it's gone behind for the Wednesday goal kick Yep, just a little bit of a misunderstanding there when players don't play together on a regular basis that happens and unfortunately it's, it's cost us again it's cost us possession again talk about the first derby double that it would be for Sheffield Wednesday 95 years let's not forget they've not won a Bramall Lane for a long long time as well 1967 was their last victory on this ground and before you asked John no I wasn't playing <laughs> Montgomery with an overhead kick clearance over the halfway line. There's Beavers, who I think defended manfully today. Clearing over the top. Bromby will smash it back into the Wednesday half. Sharp rises, can't win it. Richard Wood clears with a high ball onto the halfway line. Montgomery wins the ball in the air. Hendry flicks on. Kilgallant out on the left. A centre-back, but playing as a left winger as we watch play now, as United try desperately to find an equaliser, just as they did in this fixture last season when James Beattie thumped in a free kick right at the death. Here's Ward, left corner of the Wednesday penalty area. Offside. Pushed down the line, there's a flag here on Hendry as he receives the ball. That's that will do for a Wednesday perspective and Steve Watson's going to come on to provide the calming influence. And going off, I think it's a very sensible change as well. Jermaine Johnson's going to go off and Steve Watson's going to come on. John Pearson. Watch them water bottles. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say that, yeah. But, uh, no, 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 he's, he's, uh, he's a lot Jermaine's happier. gone right over the far side. Look. And for those who uh, can't remember what happened at Hillsborough last season, you may recall when Jermaine Johnson was substituted, he kicked a water bottle that was pretty much full. 
and he kicked it into the crowd. I, I had a great first half. I think again in the second half, you couldn't really. I think we've, uh, as a team, we've played really well, but no sort of outstanding individual performance in the second half. Jermaine Johnson taking an awful long time to leave the field. The referee will just add it on, though. He's, he's not stupid, is he? No. And, and rightly so as well, but we just need a, a bit of good fortune, Paul, to, to a, a, bit, a break from somewhere. I think the lads have played and responded to going in, into half-time very well. I think the uh, second half, they've dominated this without creating too many goal-scoring opportunities. Here's Clark rising and winning the ball in the air. Ooh, I'll tell you what, if Leon Clark had just gambled there, it uh, might not have got through to Paddy Kenny. Four, four minutes, four four minutes. minutes. have added on time as Kenny kicks long downfield, drops inside the penalty area, Billy Sharp! Great save, Grant! Well, what a Super stop, that is why he is regarded as one of the top keepers in the Championship. Fingertip save, tipped it over the crossbar from the boot of Billy Sharp, late corner. Superb save. That makes up for the uh, error in the first half, but uh, he's more than done that for most of the game anyway. Corner kick United, Cop end of Bramall Lane, we're now playing at a time. Quinn will deliver, left footed over the six yard box, Bromby got his head to the ball, and Ward couldn't get on the end of it, and it goes narrowly wide, but it will be a goal kick. I think it was Mark Beavers that just slipped and allowed the shot, but just got his fingertips to it, that ball was flying. Great save from Lee Grant. Well, they're bouncing away to the left-hand side now. The Wednesday fans in full effect. Well, no doubt, Hillsborough as well. No they're, doubt they're doing the same Hillsborough. back there on the big screen as well. Come on, Keith, me you, let's bounce. <laughs> yeah, I've got no complaint. As I've said, it's a good performance from United second half, and I'm pleased to see Sharp coming on and looking at his best again. He just needs a little bit of a break in front of the goal, but it was a good save to the keeper, to be but fair. What does it say, Keith, about United's reliance on Darius Henderson? Well, we, we, the manager said we were one-dimensional, and this proves it, because we haven't really performed second half better, but we, we, we need a big man up there. We, we've not been able to adapt. Well, Kilgallen is now playing as a striker, but Wednesday have the ball deep in the Sheffield United half, and we've played a minute and a half of the four added on in the Sheffield Derby here on BBC Radio Sheffield and five live sports extra throwing to the oh, penalty oh, linesman nice. flagging here furiously as well was it a foul throw? yeah well, that's better I can go back down there for me that just wastes a few more seconds come on don't retreat keep him there he's going to go back to Kennett Bromby throws back to the keeper go on go on he dribbles away from Leon Clark and passes the ball into Naismith go on Leon Desperate stuff now for Sheffield United as they try and get something from this as Naismith goes long into the box, Lee Grant comes and missed it drops on the right edge of the box, Montgomery first of the ball Watson's there with him, Montgomery has Lee Hendry supporting chance across on the right boot into the near post, steered away by O'Connor goes for a throw next to the corner flag maybe one late rally from Sheffield United as Holford comes over to take the throw Norton wants a piece of it but Holford surely is going to throw long into the penalty area Speared over the six-yard box to the far post. Bromby rising but couldn't get there. Michael Gray should be able to see this one away. It's cleared into touch. It's going to be another United throw on the left, taken quickly by Stephen Quinn to Lee Hendry. Quinn gets it back. Left-hand side, looks to cross. Good block from Potter. But Wednesday standing firm. Come on, ref. They know how much this would mean to their manager and their supporters. Into the box it goes. Bromby back out wide it goes. Quinn. Attacking Potter towards the bar line, plays the ball in low. Billy Sharp's in there now, post, and now Kilgallen tried to get the shot off. And he didn't quite manage it. Cleared away, Norton's there, halfway line. Leon Clark putting him under pressure. About 45 seconds left of the Sheffield Derby as Naismith pumps long, edge of the box. Great defending, Tugate was back there. Now Michael Gray looks to challenge with Montgomery. And that's going to break for a Wednesday throw-in. Within touching distance, John Pearson. It's all over, Paul. Come on, ref. Whistle in mouth, end the game. All the noise from the Wednesday fans, the Blades fans heading for the exits. Wednesday fans loud and proud inside Bramall Lane and no doubt loud and proud back at Hillsborough as they watch on the big screen. Yes! The referee puts the whistle to his lips. Sheffield Wednesday have completed a famous derby double for the first time in 95 years. Sheffield Wednesday beat their arch rivals Sheffield United home and away 
in one season. Brian Laws puts himself into Sheffield Wednesday history and he's ready to talk now to Seth Bennett. History maker Brian, how does that feel? Uh, absolutely ecstatic. I, I can't believe that we've come here. We've played so, so well and we deserved everything we've got today. We were the better side, had the better chances. We were excellent and I've got to give full praise to our players. Absolutely magnificent, and I'm so so proud of my players. So so proud of the football club, and highly delighted for them supporters out there, not just at this ground, but at their. We can hear you at Hillsborough now. All the best guys, get in there! Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff from Brian Laws. Credit to him. I think he's right. I think the best team won it. Keith Edwards, let's bring you in. Uh, no complaints. I think Wednesday showed a little bit more imagination. First half performance was a, was a good one for them. I thought second half we dominated the game, but I think even John would say, well, it was always going to go that way. We were chasing the game. I don't think we've shown enough imagination and enough passing ability, and we haven't adapted to the, to the fact that we've lost a big man, and there you go. More reaction, Lee Grant, the Wednesday keeper with Seth. Lee, big save at the end. How does that feel to win the Steel City derby and do the double? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, long overdue. I think we should have done it last year, to be fair. Very unlucky not to get the win here. 2-1 in the same circumstances. It was a bit nervy at the end, but we got there. Really pleased, really pleased. What about that lot behind the goal? Unbelievable. They've been so good. They've been great to us last year. And possibly we didn't deserve it. A bit even better now. Superb first half performance. I think that was the key. That's what won it. I was a little bit disappointed after half time. I really believe that we could have gone on and uh, got out of the extra goals. Have you got Tommy? More reaction coming up full time here at Bramall Lane. Sheffield United 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. And let's go back onto the pitch. Tommy Spur with Seth Bennett. A goal scorer in a Steel City derby. How did that feel? Brilliant. I can't, it's a dream come true. I can't, can't believe that came to me like it did and so early on I'm we're buzzing then for the rest of the game and what about winning here what does that mean to you obviously we, we knew before that it's not been done for, for ages and you can just see this, how much it means to the fans they can hear you back at Hillsborough right now what do you say to them just thanks for your support and just brilliant or we can do it again next season how are they going to scrape you off the ceiling tonight I don't know <laughs> we had to come down really but obviously I say I'm buzzing hey, congratulations great goal today thank you cheers Brian, well done. You've got the Indian sign on Sheffield, Sheffield United. Well, it seems to be that way, but uh, more importantly, we've you know put that uh, hoodoo with the 96 years, is it? Uh, put that to bed. Uh, I'll probably be uh, dead and buried the next time this ever happens again, but having said that, it's been a fantastic uh, day. Very, very proud of the players. Delighted for the supporters who were here. Even more delighted for the 9,000 that were back at our hotels we're watching this on the screen, so it must have been a fantastic atmosphere there as well. Uh, I'm just a very, very proud man today. 